Hello everyone, this is the short version of sewing together your own three-tiered book. This three-tiered book was made with a single sheet of cardboard and nine signatures made of cardstock and it was sewn in using three-hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm going to show how to make this exact version there's another video with other versions, other sizes, and things like that. So what you need for this book is a piece of cardboard for your cover. If you want a very sturdy book, you want a sturdy piece of cardboard. So you want your cardboard to be 11 inches tall by 9 and 3 quarter inches wide. Okay, That will give you an 11 inch tall book and four and a half inches wide. You need nine pieces of cardstock, eight and a half by eleven inches. I used 65 pound. I like sturdy pages. You can use regular copy paper, but you might want to add a few more pages. For tools, I have a ruler. I use a pencil for marking. Today I'm going to use a black pen so that you can see my marks. Bone folder, nine binder clips or paper clips. You need a push pin for your holes. A blunt needle or any needle will work. Uh, we are punching the holes through the paper and the cardboard, so a blunt needle will, wor will, will work. Sorry. Um, but if you all you have is a sharp needle, that what, use what you have. And for thread, I am using a dual duty button and craft thread. Uh, it's it's pretty strong. It it's strong enough for this project. Uh, you can use crochet thread or quilting thread, uh, something kind of sturdy. If you've got wax linen, yeah, that would probably be the best. You also need, I use a phone book to punch my holes and a piece of scrapbook paper, or piece, just a piece of scrap paper, um, and it is three and a half inches tall. So that's what we need for our tools. Let's start with making our cover. Let me leave this up here so that it will stay focused. All right. So take your ruler, 11 inches tall and 9 and 3 quarter inches wide here. Um, I am going to mark into the book right on the top here, 4 and a half inches in. And I'm also going to do that on the bottom so that you can see four and a half inches in just a little mark and I'm going to do that on the other side as well just on the top somewhere it doesn't matter and on the bottom and then I am going to use my bone folder and what I'm doing is I am lining up the two dots four and a half inches in I'm going to score it with my bone folder Oops. and I'm going to push that fold against the ruler to make sure that the fold is nice and straight and then crease that and then I'm going to do the same thing for the next two marks that I've made line up the marks on the top and the bottom Score and push that cardboard over my ruler and fold it nicely. 
and this makes your cover. It's just a one piece of cardboard cover. All right. You can do this in three pieces. I'll show that in a different video. All right, so I've got my cover. I'm not going to cover this one so that we can see the marks as I'm making it, but this is the sp this is the place if you want to cover this with painted paper or stamped p images or or whatever, this is the time to cover the cover with that paper. Um, I also have painted the cardboard and that works really well too. So that is the time to do that. So the next thing to do is to, we're going to mark where the signatures go. Now I am going to mark this down here and then I will show you exactly what I'm, I'm doing. I am marking the center of the spine. So I am lining up the one inch mark where I think the center of my spine is. And I am looking at the lines on either side to make sure that there's equal distance on each side of my one inch mark. So let me mark it and then I will show you what I'm doing. Let's see, a quarter inch on both sides and then about a sixteenth, I think. Let's see if that works. Quarter inch. I'm using these little marks here on the spine to see where my marks should go. I see. Sorry. One inch, quarter inch, sixteenth inch, just on the other side. Okay, so there it is. All right, so I am going to make a mark right in the center. And then I am going to make a mark halfway between the center and my spine, which is a little more than an eighth of an inch. Okay, so let's put this way up high so that you can see what I've done and I can explain it with the marks there. Make sure I'm all lined up. All right. You can see, let's get the marks exactly right so you can see what I've done. So the lines on the outside are where my cover bends. I've put the one inch mark right in the center and there's about a quarter inch on either side. So I've counted the lines from my one inch mark on either side to make sure that those are equal distance. And then I have made three little marks there. And this is all done on the spine. Okay, so I'm also going to do that on the bottom. In the exact same places that I put the first set of marks. And I'll do this faster because I can remember which marks I used. So I have three little dots there on the top and the bottom. And what I will do next, and I always use pencil for this, I'm just using the pen just so that you can see the marks. I like to use pencil so I can erase it. 
So now I am going to draw a line down connecting each of those dots and this is where I will be sewing in my signatures just like that okay you can see the spine is here the fold for the spine is there and the lines are in the center there this is not an exact science I do guesstimate just a little bit. If you look at this book, it is not exactly centered, but you really don't notice it unless you're the one that puts the book together. It works perfectly fine if it's just off a little bit. So when I try to measure, I usually miscalculate just a little bit and it never ends up quite right. So if I do it this way, it's close enough. For my satisfaction. So that is our cover for a minute. So let's go on to the pages. I want to get our p nine pieces of cardstock out. And it's this is the long way. We want to cut strips three and a half inches, three and a half inches, and three and a half inches. you will get three strips of paper from from your your piece of paper and you do have it half an inch of waste it was just easier for me to um, say three and a half inches rather than try to divide three into eleven um, it was just too much math for me so three and a half inches just made it easier so you've got the nine sheets of paper cut into strips all right the next thing you want to do is start folding your pieces of paper in half use your bone folder so the papers are nice and creased I like to do them all one at a time to make sure that they're really accurate and I go through the entire stack folding them all together All right. when I get them folded I put three of them together and that is one signature All right. so you are going to want to put three three together until you have no more you'll have nine signatures all right. The next thing we are going to do is make a template for our holes. This is where your little piece of scrapbook paper comes comes in handy here. It is three and a half inches tall, just like your signature. It doesn't matter how wide it is it's just a pattern I like to fold it in half and then I like my three hole pamphlet stitch to be exactly in the center so I fold it in half the other way and I fold it down about half an inch Fold it so you can see it's about half an inch. Okay. And I unfold that and I'm going to put marks, little dots, so you can see where my folds are right there on the crease that one's off just a little bit okay so this is my pattern I'm going to take my push pin and just poke those holes so I can see them a little bit easier 
right there on the crease. Okay. And I am going to write the top right up here. All right. So this is my pattern, and I'm going to put this in each signature. I'm going to use a binder clip to clip all those pages together so they stay all together. And I like to open up my phone book and use it as a cradle with my push pin and push through each of those holes, all three of the holes in each signature. I like to open up the phone book. It guides the push pin through the crease of your signature so that when you are done, to get those holes just a little bit bigger so you can see them. So when they are done, the holes are right there on the fold of the, the signature. The phone book allows that push pin to be guided right through that, that mountain fold there. So I am going to just slip out my pattern and leave the binder clip so that all my holes are all together. And I'm going to do that for all of my, my nine signatures. Let me just punch the holes for this. And I'm leaving the binder clip on the top so I know where the top of my signature is. Okay. We'll push pin right there. Get my pattern out. The next thing I am going to do so that I can see them is I'm just going to make a little mark at those holes so that I can see them. I need to make the, the, hole, the marks on this side so that I can see them easily. Just making a little mark, okay? And I'm going to do that for all of them. And this is where I guesstimate quite a bit. So you can see I've just made marks so that I can see those where the holes are. So I'm just taking three of the signatures now, but I would do I would poke the holes through all nine of them. And I am going to just line up those signatures where I think they should go on in my book. I want to make sure that they're equal distance apart inside and that they have a nice even lip all the way around. So I am going to, oh, that's up just a little bit too far, so let me shift them down just a bit. So you can see there's just a little bit of a lip on the top, a little bit of a lip on the bottom. And they're pretty close in the center, but not really touching. You want them to be able to move independently fairly well. So line them up against that first line that you have made here. Make sure that they are where you want them to be. And this is where I guesstimate. I don't measure. I just put a little dot or a line just to indicate where the holes need to be punched in my cover. 
okay just like that so you can see that there's little dots there to make it easier make sure that they're straight across I take my ruler and make the other two dots on the other line where they need to be and I go all the way down and do all of them at one time so they're straight and this is guesstimating it's not exactly measured but it is close enough I find it easier guesstimating than it is trying to measure and being frustrated because I made a mistake in my math somewhere okay so now you see where all the holes need to be punched all the way down take my phone book and I just do this on the very top and I just punch with my push pin the hole all the way through make sure that you're going through the entire cover that your holes big enough for your needle and punch all your holes right where those dots are on the lines I have a video showing how to do the three hole pamphlet stitch so I'm just going to do an abbreviated version of the three hole pamphlet stitch but you want to punch all your holes all at one time all right and I'm just going to do those for now to save some time so I am going to use my blunt needle if I can find it and my thread and I'm going to take my first signature here and I want three links the height of my signature this is going to be too big let me make it a little bit smaller needle here if you have your eye of your needle is a little large it might be difficult to get through your hole so keep that in mind and I'm using a thimble I was a quilter for too many years if I don't use a thimble I start to hurt myself with the, with the needle so you want to go through the center hole in your signature you want to leave a tail and I like to clip my tail and my binder clip just so I know it's not going to slip out and we're going to start with the first line on the top this first line here the second hole down we're going to go in in there through the top hole on the same line and through the hole in the signature down all the way to the bottom hole of the signature and through the third hole on the same line in your cover and then through the center hole where there's already a thread and up through the center hole of your signature try not to split your threads so then you have both tails I don't need my binder clip anymore you have both tails up front and you want to make sure your tails are on either side of the thread that goes all the way from the top to the bottom you want tails on both sides you're going to be making a square nut over the top of that so tighten your threads just a little bit make sure there's no gaps of thread 
in between or on the other side. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Just make a square knot. Like that. Cut off your tail. And make sure that it's sewn in the way you want it to be sewn in. So that is the first signature. You sew the other nine signatures in exactly the same way. You do the center and then the outside. Then you do the second row from one end to the other end. And then the last row from one side to the next side. So then you've got your signatures all sewn in. You're going to have quite a bit of space there when you get them sewn in. This allows you to put stuff, paint and you know collage or whatever you're going to do with your book. It gives you space to add all that stuff. So this works out pretty well. When you start getting things on your book, it fills up nicely. Okay. So don't worry that it, it looks too empty. You're going to fill it up. All right. So that is the way you make your, tier, your three-tier book. It's really simple. You might want to practice a couple of times just to get the hang of it. Um, but it's really, really simple. So I will be doing another video showing some of the variations and a, a video I do have a video on making covers so you can make a cover from a single sheet of cardboard or you can use um, three separate pieces of cardboard um, there's many different ways to put together your three-tiered book so this one is only the basic one if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I hope you make a ton of three-tier books because they're a lot of fun to work in. Thanks for watching.